Nagewaza, throwing techniques. Nagewaza is further broken down into Tachiwaza, which is throwing techniques involving hand, hip, or leg, and Sutemewaza, which is sacrifice throws, using your body to take your opponent down. Tachiwaza has three subcategories, Tewaza, hand throws, Koshiwaza, hip throws, and Ashiwaza, leg throws. Tautoshi, side body drop. This was the foundation throw of all my throws in competition. The key to Tautoshi is keeping your wrists relaxed and flexible, so when you snap them up, your opponent comes off balance. Try not to worry about where your feet are placed, just worry about pulling your opponent off balance and turning as fast as you can. Again, let's look at the footwork. My left foot goes across his ankle and I pull my opponent over my foot. Again, as I set my opponent up, it's important to snap my wrists in order to create that kazushi or off balancing. Then I follow through. Remember the key to throwing for your opponent or full point is to use your whole body. Not just your arms or legs, but your whole body committed 100%. Another competition version is a side Taotoshi. Staying in front of your opponent by a half a step, just like we were doing in Kochi Guard. This time I'm just going to step across and throw him with Taotoshi. It's a very quick and effective throw. This, the key to making this successful is setting your opponent up and staying that half a step in front of him. The timing is on the second step is when you should attack. Just think about your legs stepping across and keeping the throw nice and tight and quick. A common problem in Tao Toshi is your opponent holding you out and not letting your left hand or your lapel hand come in. So one way around this is to come in with one hand. I often did this in competition against a right-sided opponent. Watch as I come in, I bring my left hand across and just leave it in the elbow joint of my opponent's left arm. Keep the pulling hand very tight and the quickness of the body turn will complete the throw. Ippon Seonage, shoulder throw. Another classic move in judo, this throw you can see in many Olympic and international competitions. Let's break it down. As I'm moving backwards, my feet are going to be shoulder width apart, back straight, and follow through. In detail, let's look at my body position. My legs are shoulder width apart, my knees are slightly bent, my back is going to be straight. As I turn my body, I'm pulling his arm as tight as possible to trap his bicep in between my elbow, my forearm, and my shoulder. Then I drop my body and throw. Again, my shoulder should be about the same height as his shoulder. I don't want to drop too low, otherwise his arm's going to come across my neck. In slow motion, I come in, turn, and throw. Let's look at it from a moving angle, the timing of it. As he steps forward, my body is twisting and turning into position. I create the off-balancing of timing by pulling him forward with my right hand. Again, the positioning of my legs should be about shoulder width apart. My left hand also is pulling forward to off-balancing. Let's look at it from a different angle. Notice how I pull him as tight as possible and then turn. There should not be any space in between my shoulder and his chest.
When done with the proper quickness and timing, this throw, Iponse Onagi, can be very effective, especially against bigger opponents. Marote Seonage, shoulder throw. The difference between Marote and Ipon Seonage are only the fact that my left arm is curling underneath his armpit as opposed to letting go and coming straight under the arm. Notice that my feet are slightly overturned. This is to create a little bit more torque. Again, you watch both feet are pointing a little bit to the right. A key point to remember is try to keep your wrist as straight as possible because when you bend your wrist it becomes a weaker throw. The follow through is all the same. You notice my right hand is pulling my opponent up, my left pinky is turning out. This is to create more of that off balancing which is needed in all judo moves. Try to bend as low as I can to come underneath his belt or center of gravity. Let's look in slow motion at the timing. Notice my right hand pulling his leg forward. As he steps forward, I twist in for the throw. Katagaruma, shoulder wheel. Katagaruma, surprisingly, is a hand technique. And what that means is your hands or wrists basically create the opening or the off-balancing as your body drops underneath. Notice how my hand pulls up, he moves on to his toes, I drop my body underneath and try to lift with my legs, keeping my back straight. Let's look in slow motion. Looks from the top. Now let's look at a more competitive version of Kataguruma. I simply duck under his far arm, lifting him onto my shoulders and throwing him back into the rear. My opponent's got a far right-sided grip, so basically I'm ducking under his other arm and taking him off balance in the direction that he's already leaning toward. This takes a strong back, but again, you're lifting with your legs and not with your back. Another competitive version of Katagaruma is to surprise my opponent by simply dropping underneath the center of gravity. As I follow through, I extend my arm and come into the pin. Remember to pull with your right arm as you drop underneath and finish the throw. Uki Otoshi, floating drop. Classic throw taught in kata, this throw demonstrates the essence of judo. As my opponent pushes or moves forward, I use his energy and strength against him, dropping my knee and throwing him forward. 
it's important to control the hickey tear, the pulling arm. As I drop, I'm gonna pull and whip my opponent across. Again, as he steps is the correct timing to drop my knee down and whip him across. To apply this technique in competition, push your opponent backwards so he reacts and pushes forward. At that moment, turn quickly, thrusting your elbow into his armpit and pulling down with your hikite or pulling arm. This timing involving all your body, your legs, and your arms creates that whipping motion. This throw is difficult and uses a lot of timing. Skuenage, scooping throw. This is often used as a counter to Uchimata in competition. As the person enters, block first, and then with your knees bent and your back straight, pick him straight up and straight down. It's important to control him with your left hand on his lapel. As you block him and pick him up, my left hand is controlling and then pulling down at the last second. Just watch in slow motion, block, pick up step, and finish. Notice I use my right knee to drive straight up in the air to help lift him. It's important to lift with your legs and not with your back. Sumio Toshi, corner drop. Another throw that demonstrates the pure essence of judo. Timing. As my opponent is moving forward, I'm going to use the correct timing to switch directions and throw him backwards. Basically taking his feet out from underneath him. This is all done with control of the upper body and my wrists. Keep my wrists flexible enough to use it as a whipping motion to change his direction. I'm also planting my feet deep into the mat and pushing back at the right time. This throw is an important teaching tool to show the fundamentals of how judo really works. Morote gari, leg scoop. In this technique, I surprise my opponent by dropping my body below his center of gravity and scooping up his legs. Notice how I stand upright, and as he approaches me, at the last second, I drop with my back straight, my knees bent, and drive straight forward. Try to grab just behind the knees. By grabbing here, you'll off-balance your opponent and simply scoop him forward. Let's look at it from the top. Ogoshi hip throw.
one of the first moves we learn as a beginner in judo. Ogoshi teaches you to lift with your legs and not your back. Your arm basically grabs around his back, sometimes grabbing the belt, other times just placing your hand behind his back. Pulling arm extends out as you pivot, turn your head. Place your feet about shoulder width apart. Again, back straight as you lift your opponent. Ukigoshi floating hip throw. This is one of the foundation throws of judo. When I was training in Japan, the high school kids used to train an hour on this throw each day. Let's look at the hip placement. Notice my body is to the right side of his body. I'm not directly in front of him. My right hand is pulling him off balance as I turn in and create the throw. My left hand is placed about the middle of his back. Again, from the front view, you can see that I'm a little bit off to the side. This creates a whipping effect. Now let's look at it as I'm moving into the opponent. Okay, I take a deep step with my left, and my right comes back, lifting my opponent as I'm turning. This is pure timing. Now in a different angle as I'm moving back, as his left foot comes forward, that's the time that I turn. Timing is essential in this throw. Tsurikomi Goshi, lifting hip throw. Another classic technique that every beginner should learn first. Most important is my body position. As I pull my opponent off balance using both my left hand and my right hand, again, my feet are shoulder width apart, and my knees bend, my, but my back stays straight. And then I lift my opponent when my knees come up. The left lapel does all the controlling. If you look at my left hand, the way I lift it up. When I lift my left hand up, he comes to his toes. That creates kazushi, or off-balancing. Again, the left hand positioning, or the left elbow positioning, is against his chest. Let's look at the footwork. As I pull him forward, he steps forward and then I turn. It's sometimes a difficult position to get into and beginners often feel like they're off balance when they're practicing this move. Harai Goshi, sweeping hip throw. This throw is often used by tall fighters because their legs are long and they're able to sweep out their opponent's legs at ease. The timing is similar to like a Koshiguruma or any other hip throw. When your opponent steps forward, you turn and kick out your left leg 
which sweeps out your opponent's legs. Again, the key to all hip throws are really in the off balancing or the pulling. My right hand is pulling my opponent off balance and the sweeping leg does nothing more than just follow through for the throw. It's important not to emphasize sweeping your opponent's legs out, but put more emphasis on off balancing your opponent, letting your leg just be a guide. Let's watch in slow motion. Again, keep the sweeping leg straight, point your toe, and finish the throw. Hanegoshi, spring hip throw. Another classic hip throw in Kodokan Judo, Hanegoshi is basically the same as Harai Goshi except for the fact that your left leg is slightly bent. In Harai Goshi it's fully extended, sweeping both legs out. In Hane Goshi it's slightly bent and placed on the inner thigh or, or knee area of your opponent. The steps are the same as my opponent follows, follows my foot back, I step in and turn. Utsuri Goshi, changing hip throw. This is a classic counter in Judo, where basically I'm replacing his hip with my hip. As he comes in, I check or block, lift him straight up in the air, and throw my hip in for like an Ogoshi. Posture is really important to keep your back straight as he attacks, Use your hip to block, and then bend your knees and throw your hip in. My pulling hand is very important also to control his body. As I block, I keep him tight, close into me, and as I finish the throw, I pull with my right hand. Look from the top. Again, keeping my back straight, block, and switch hips. Ushiro Goshi, rear hip throw. This is a classic counter against the hip throw, where I check and then basically just take my opponent straight up and straight back. Notice how I block with my hip first, bend my knees, lift with my legs, and take him straight back. This works well against a person who is a little bit taller than you because you're able to get underneath him easier. Also control him by keeping his body close to yours and basically bear hugging him until you throw him down. Again, keep my back straight. Don't try to anticipate this because when you do that, you're gonna bend your back and then you'll get thrown. Let's look at it from the top. Straight up, and straight down. Tsurigoshi, lifting hip throw. The main difference between this throw, Tsurigoshi and Ogoshi, is the fact that I grab his belt. Watch as he comes in, I grab his belt, and then I attack, much like an Ogoshi.
Another variation is to pull my opponent down and grab his belt from the over his shoulder. Basically I use the same hip movement with my legs shoulder width apart and I use the pulling arm to complete the throw. Let's look at it from the overhead. Koshi Garuma, hip wheel. This is one of the fundamental throws in judo. It's important to learn this well because it enhances your other hip throws. Let's look in slow motion. It's important to turn my hip completely and rotate my opponent around. My right hand pulls forward, my left hand comes around the neck and controls the back of the neck pulling forward. Look at the position of my feet, they're shoulder width apart, my back is straight as I bend my knees, and then basically I lift my knees and lift my opponent off the mat at the same time. Look in slow motion again, proper positioning, and then explode. By doing many uchikomis in Koshigurumo, this improved my uchimata and also my harai gosh. <laughs>